Four-man rush, moving the pocket. He hit and sacked inside the five. The ball is free. Denver's got it. Touchdown, Denver. And down he goes. Our defense was uh, was awesome tonight. He hit from behind and down he goes. And there's Demarcus Ware. Newton, fastball oh, over the belt. Man, tip, intercepted. They just played better than us. I don't know what you want me to say. The Denver Broncos are world champions. They have just won Super Bowl 50. And the Lombardi Trophy is coming home to the Mile High City. It's the eve of the NFL season. It has been over 200 days since the Broncos beat the Panthers in the Super Bowl. The NFL season kicking off tomorrow with a rematch. And who better to preview the season but former head coach of the Raiders and Bucks and our color analyst for ESPN's Monday Night Football Games. We are so excited to have John Gruden here on First Take. Coach, thank you so much for being with us. Hey, thanks. Good morning. Thanks for having me. What's up, Coach? Stephen A. Smith here, your long-lost buddy. Always great to see you, Coach. Um, I've been looking for you for quite some time. Last time we were face-to-face -face a couple of years ago, you sat up there and told me somebody will get you, he got you. You were talking about a Tim Tebow and how he was going to be a star. And yet, Stephen A., you, you don't know, Stephen, he's gonna, he'll get you. You turn your back, he'll get you, he'll take you out. I, I, and now he's playing baseball. Do you owe me an apology, Coach? I'm just, I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering. Hey, last time I was in Bristol to be on your show, you were homesick or yeah, something, or you were hiding him. from me. Get him. So it goes both ways, my <laughs> friend. Tebow did win a playoff game, and I'm still convinced I could get Tebow and come back to the league someday and win some games. I still believe that guy can play. Yeah, wow. yet he never got another shot. Seven and four. Is that an issue of people looking at the the – the the kind of process too much he doesn't throw right it doesn't look right this and that and not enough at the results well there's a lot of ways to win football games but when you have Demarius Thomas and Eric Decker and John Elway in the front office you probably want to throw the football and clearly they went a different direction and they haven't found a place for Tim Tebow to work and, and play the kind of football that he plays it's going to take a full commitment to the zone read the spread system that he had success with at Florida Coach, I just want to thank you for putting Stephen A. in his place there, checking him. That doesn't happen often on the this, on this show. We love it. But I, I need your help here. And, and can you be a voice of reason for us? So earlier, we were having a debate on Ben Roethlisberger, where he ranks among the league's best quarterbacks. Terry Bradshaw had him at one. Stephen A. has him at three. Max has him six overall. Where would you rank Big Ben? I have a hard time ranking these guys 1 through 10 or 1 through 12, but he's in the top five. Anytime you're a two-time world champion and you have the results that he's had, his one-loss record speaks for itself. And I just saw Pittsburgh in the preseason play Philadelphia without Roethlisberger. I saw him play Carolina without Roethlisberger. I saw him play last year in the regular season without Roethlisberger. Pittsburgh can't score without Ben Roethlisberger, so I can see why Terry Bradshaw had him number one. He's in the top two or three in my book. He is, uh, he's, he's able to do just about anything you want him to do, running or passing. So, so who do you leave out of the top five, Coach? Because someone's got to drop. There's only so many spaces. If he's top two or three, there's Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, and Ben Roethlisberger. Is that your list? I mean, that means he's ahead of Drew Brees, Cam Newton, Russell Wilson? I, I knew I was going to hear from you to start this <laughs> debate. <laughs> All I can say is I think there's 10 guys you can win a world championship with. I think it's a matter of who they have as their supporting cast, what kind of offensive line, what kind of receivers, what kind of defense do they play. I have a hard time keeping Phillip Rivers and Drew Brees out of this conversation. They just don't have the supporting cast that they've had in previous seasons. But you got to go with Russell Wilson. you got to put Cam Newton up there. You've got to have Rodgers and Brady up there. What Hard about to keep Eli Ben Man Roethlisberger out of my top five. What about Eli what? Manning, who not only has two Super Bowls, but unlike Ben Roethlisberger, has two Super Bowl MVPs? But you got to get to the recent facts. They haven't been in the playoffs. They haven't been in competition for the big wins. Until they get back, I think we put Eli outside the top five right now. Mm-hmm. 
Coach, it's interesting that you bring that up because right now, on a serious note, just break this down. I know you don't get into people's money or anything like that, but we had a debate yesterday where we were talking about Drew Brees, and my attitude is I don't care about the 37 years of age. I'm thinking about the four times he's thrown for over 5,000 yards. I'm thinking about the last 10 years he's thrown for at least 4,000 yards. And I'm saying what he means to that Saints organization, particularly on the offensive side of the ball, when you consider how anemic their defense has been, this is a man that is worth of the contract he is seeking. Max is of the mindset that, excuse me, no quarterback past the age of 40 gets it done. I'm not thinking about giving Breeze those kind of dollars. What's your take on Breeze's value to the New Orleans Saints in terms of his worth overall? Well, Steven, name one Pro Bowl receiver that he's played with. Can't do it. I'm waiting. I don't know that he's had. How many have he had? How many has he had? He has done it with a, a variety of different tight ends, receivers, offensive linemen. And you said it. It's not production. It's great production. Yardage, points, third down, red zone. Drew Brees does it at the line of scrimmage. He is relentless in his preparation, his conditioning. And he has not had a lot of continuity around him. And their defense has really struggled recently. They almost have to score every time they get the ball. Yeah, but Drew Brees, one of the best I've ever seen, Coach, for what that's worth. Um, maybe not much compared to what, obviously, you've seen. And yet, if you look at it, quarterbacks to a man, not a single exception in the history of football so far. They can cruise along at a very high altitude till right, you know, even past 40. But before their 41st birthday, none of them have ever been the same, and he'll be 38 these playoffs. How many dollars can you really commit to that, that guy over how many years? That's a great question. It's going to get hard. You know, you're looking at some of the best quarterbacks in, in the whole league that are getting up there. Eli Manning you just talked about, Phillip Rivers. Uh, you have Drew Brees. You have a number of these guys, Tom Brady, that are getting up there in age. Tony Romo is another man making a lot of money. Where are the replacements coming from? If you don't have a quarterback, you can't win. I think people are really rolling the dice, but these guys have proven they can play, but you have to get a contingency plan pretty soon. Let me transition to Andrew Luck, Coach, and what your thoughts are about him. Last year, just 15 touchdowns, 12 interceptions in the games that he played, had a myriad of injuries. Uh, that offensive line over the last several years hasn't done the greatest job of protecting him. Plus, you haven't had a stout running game, so he's got to drop back to pass, even though he's got some of the speediest receivers in the game um, and, and Moncrief, Hilton, and others. The bottom line is simple. I still have some trepidation about about the Indianapolis Colts simply because of how they're built. I know they've been trying to buffer up their offensive line, but I'm wondering what should we expect from Andrew Luck based on what we saw last year? Do you expect more of the same, or do you expect him to make amends for the kind of year he had last year, struggling even before he had the injuries? Well, they got to get their supporting cast resolved. They just don't run the football there. They haven't had a 100-yard back in about five years. They do not run the football. They don't protect the passer. And Andrew Luck is getting punished. He could be in the conversation of being in the top five or number one overall, but they got to get some help. This offensive line has struggled, to say the least. They've got a rookie center. That's a start. I love Kelly, their draft pick out of Alabama. But everywhere else, they have struggled big time. If I'm the owner of the Colts, I'm going to resolve the offensive line. I'm going to take care of Luck because he is getting hit way too much. I worry about him. I really do. Well, how worried are you about him when you consider the AFC South? We got Brock Osweiler in Houston now. Everybody says Jacksonville is coming. Mariota had an impressive rookie campaign, and now you've got DeMarco Murray and Derrick Henry uh, uh, both in, in, in Tennessee, and they seem like they're capable of doing some things. How worried should the Colts be, not just for Andrew Luck, but for themselves, based on what we're seeing developing in the AFC South? I like the quarterbacks in the South, and I think if you put all four teams in the AFC South on the board and just looked at position by position, I think the Colts are fourth out of four in terms of overall personnel. They don't have the marquee pass rushers. They don't have the shutdown defenders. They don't have the offensive line or the running game. Some of these teams like Tennessee and Jacksonville are on their way up, and the Houston Texans over the last 10 games of the regular season last year, as good as anyone in the NFL on defense, 
And when you throw in Fuller out of Notre Dame, Braxton Miller out of Ohio State to go with DeAndre Hopkins and Bill O'Brien with Osweiler, I think Indianapolis is in trouble. Yeah, the Texans look legit. I'm excited to see where, where they go this year. Uh, Coach, we'll give you a quick break. We'll, we'll get you as a hot seat, hot seat here for now. When we come back, we'll have more with you. Stay put. More First Take after the break with John Gruden. Stay here. Back with ESPN Monday Night Football analyst John Gruden. So happy to have him here with us. And, uh, Coach, one of the most intriguing teams this season has to be the Broncos, obviously the reigning Super Bowl champs. But they come into the season looking very different, you could argue, on both sides of the ball. What are your expectations for Denver this season? we got to remember, Denver wasn't a very good offensive team last year. Got to remember that. They turned the ball over a lot. They didn't throw the ball or pass protect at a championship level, but what they did is they played unbelievable defense. The cornerstones are still there. I think the Pro Bowl members of that secondary, the marquee pass rushers are intact. That's where the rubber meets the road, that championship defense. They got to prove this young quarterback can play, and I think to do that, they're going to have to rely on the Gary Kubiak running game early. Coach, what about the loss of Malik Jackson and Danny Trevathan? How do you feel about that? I think Malik Jackson's a big loss. That inside pass rush, that's what made them very unique. They're going to have to manufacture some other ways to get there. I hear that they have some young guys in the mix that they like. Derek Wolf is still there. And Wade Phillips is going to blitz. We all know that he's going to bring five and play tight man-to-man -man coverage. they got to prove that they can replace the men that they lost. Trevathan can cover. He was a good space player against all these spread formations. They lost their punter yesterday. Colquitt, I thought, was outstanding, not to mention Peyton Manning's leadership in the locker room. They got a lot to prove, just like everybody else. Coach, when I look at the AFC, here's what it comes down to for me. We can talk about the reigning defending Super Bowl champions, but as far as I'm concerned, you've lost the brilliance of a Peyton Manning, who wasn't brilliant, brilliant last year in terms of his physical performance, but we all know the intellect that he brings to the quarterback position, that's going to solely be missed and it's certainly not going to be play, replaced by a guy that hasn't really even thrown an NFL regular season pass in Trevor Simeon. So when I look at the AFC, it comes down to me to three teams. I'm thinking about the New England Patriots, particularly with the addition of Martellus Bennett to join Gronkowski. Once Brady comes back, I don't expect him to lose more than two games. I'm looking at the Pittsburgh Steelers, even with the absence of Martavis Brown. I think their offense will be prolific. And unfortunately, I can't rule out the Cincinnati Bengals, even though they haven't won a playoff game in Marvin Lewis's 12-year career there. And, of course, I'll take into account Kansas City. Am I missing anybody, or does it come down to those four teams? Kansas City, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, and New England. I think you got to take a good look at the Oakland Raiders, my really? friend. My old you, team. You sure? You sure that's not this emotional? This team is John interesting. You, you sure that's you, not emotional? You, you got to take a look. You got to take a look at the Oakland Raiders. I mean, they got a young quarterback that is on the rise. They have skill now. They got Crabtree. They got Cooper. They can run the ball with Murray. And player for player, they have as good an offensive line as there is in the AFC. If they can get a lead, Khalil Mack in this defense, they picked up Bruce Irvin. They can close you out. I like the Raiders. I like the silver and black. Mm. Coach, Ooh. staying in the AFC, and, and Stephen A. mentioned it, the Bengals. Now, they haven't won a playoff game, but last year it looked to me like Andy Dalton was showing signs of turning a, the corner under pressure. He hadn't been a great pressure player until then, but he'd seemed to reach you know, at new, if not consistent, regular season heights. And then there were little instances, you know, uh, prime time games, second half of games, second half of the season. He, you, there was an uptick in production. And I was really looking forward to him playing in the playoffs, and then it didn't happen, and the whole perfect hit and everything. Do you think the Bengals are ready to take the next step finally? I think Andy Dalton is ready to take the next step. I think he gets way too much credit for them not advancing in the playoffs. I think they got to play better collectively as a team. He, they've been in the playoffs under Dalton five straight years. Dalton has played good football. They have to get everybody on the same page in November, December, and certainly in January. But they don't have Tyler Eifert. They don't have Marvin Jones. Can the two offensive linemen that they drafted last year play? I haven't seen that yet. They have some questions they got to get resolved. They just lost their first-round pick. Jackson, a cornerback they were counting on. 
they got to prove some things just like Denver. That's why I think it's wide open. Go back to the Raiders. I think this is the year the silver and black gets back in the mix. I, I still sense the emotion there. I, st I mean, we all know you know yeah. your football, of course. We're proud to have you as our Monday Night Football voice. But I do sense the emotion with the silver and black. But I'll let it slide. I'll let it slide. Because, Coach, I got to tell you something. Something's been on my mind, and this doesn't really have much to do with what we're talking about, but I'm wondering how we should be looking at the Houston Texans in this respect. I like Rick Smith. I like the job that he has done. I'm a fan of Bill O'Brien, the coach. I think he can coach. The Houston Texans had an opportunity to have Khalil Mack. And they passed on him for Jadavion Clowney, and there's still an APB out for his game. We can't find him during the regular season. I'm wondering, Coach, what would – could you tell me – you, have you ever found yourself imagining what life would be like in Houston if, with that defense if J.J. Watt had Khalil Mack with him, how different things would be in Houston? Could you talk to me about that for a second? Well, I talk about how different it would be if they took Derek Carr at the top of the second round a couple of years ago. Mm. I wonder what it would have been like if I'd have taken Aaron Rodgers instead of the guy <laughs> we took. But you can't keep wiping the tears off your face. Hey, Clowney can play. Oh, Clowney thank you. can play. He's got to get healthy. He's got to prove it. He's had a good preseason. The guy was electrifying at times at South Carolina. At times. He was a slam dunk number I, 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 one overall you know, pick. I can't believe Tony I'm here. Clowney, oh, if you're listening to the show, it's your time. Uh, this uh, is your time, Jadevian. Yes. Jadevian Clowney is his name. And by the way, Coach, listen, I never Don't said he can't. Hold, 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 hold on, listen to me. I never said he can't play. Mm -hmm. What I said is he ain't playing. The best ability is availability, which he never has in his favor. And when he was at South Carolina, even though he could play, he was taking time off, and we all know that. So I'm shocked that you would just sit there and say that, Coach. I really am. Well, there's a lot of ways to look at this. There's a lot of ways that you can second-guess your picks. But the story has not been written yet. Clowney has the opportunity to prove to all of his skeptics, like you, that he is a legitimate <laughs> number one pick. Remember, there are players, Stephen, that don't explode onto the scene as rookies. I know how impatient you and all your friends are, <laughs> but sometimes it takes a little bit of time. So keep an eye on Coach. Clowney this year. I think he's going to have 12 sacks. I have been patient, and more importantly, John Gruden, I have been patient with you yeah. in the past, okay? <laughs> and, and I'm still waiting, Coach. I'm still waiting. So I hear what you're saying. I'm going to hold you to that, too. I'm going to hold you. Go let's ahead, man. Let's stay within the realm of reality, as I'd like to try to do at least, so someone on this I'm show can do it. I'm waiting for you to pull it off. I'm waiting for you to pull it off. Go now, ahead. Now, let's say Clowney can stay healthy. Of course, that's a what if, but he's at the point in his career where maybe, you know, he's entering his physical prime. He has some experience. If he stays healthy with, with him and J.J. Watt on the how good can this Texas defense be? Well, you got to throw in Romeo Cornell, their defensive coordinator. He's one of the best at making adjustments. He comes, obviously, from that Bill Belichick family. And in the second half, late in the third quarter, he puts something in the game that you haven't seen for the first 45 minutes, and it drives people crazy. They have a great scheme. They can blitz you. They can play multiple coverages. The secondary is coming alive. I like the Texans. If Osweiler comes through, you might just see the Texans and the Raiders yeah, in the AFC Championship. Yeah, it's all about the silver game. and black. Who else picked the silver and black on this I show? Think, I just think yeah. John, John Gruden, oh. he's great, but I just think he's emotional right yeah. now when it comes to the Raiders. The Super I Bowl really do. winning coach. I, really and... don't, I, got, I got my suspicions about John Gruden on this one. I really oh, do. Please. I really do. Coach, sticking with us up hey, next. If I can get an earpiece, it works. If I can get an <laughs> earpiece, it works next time. I'll come on the show for an hour and go after you. Oh, oh. I, I accept that challenge. I accept that challenge. I would love it. <laughs> it might be a blessing for him. He has one that doesn't work. All right. Ooh. Up next, we're going to look at the NFC. The Cowboys are going to be without Tony Romo for the near future. Coach will tell us if he thinks they are done after the break. Plus, Shaq won three championships with Kobe Bryant. So where did he rank him among the best players since Michael Jordan? We will get into that as well. Back here with the voice of Monday Night Football, John Gruden here with us, dropping knowledge. And, John, let's talk a little bit about the team that lost the Super Bowl last year, the Panthers, reigning MVP, Cam Newton. He's going to be looking for revenge as his offense getting their number one receiver back in uh, Kelvin Benjamin. Will the Panthers get back to the Super Bowl this season, you think? 
I would bet on them. If I were going to pick one team in the NFC, I would start with the Carolina Panthers. Obviously, Cam Newton, the quarterback, and the quarterback of their defense, Luke Keekley. Those two guys are at the top of their game. They haven't lost a lot of players other than Josh Norman in the secondary, but they do get Benjamin back. I think they're going to win the South, get to the tournament, get a home game, and they're a tough team to prepare for because of all the things that Cam Newton can do. Coach, explain to us in hindsight, why did the Carolina Panthers lose the Super Bowl to the Denver Broncos? What specifically can you dissect for us that transpired that caused them to lose the way that they did? I think part of it, part of it was Wade Phillips had two weeks to prepare for Carolina. This is the toughest team to prepare for. You don't know what to even practice for. Read options, speed options, reverses, bombs. I mean, they run all kind of different plays, and they can do it in a no-huddle offense. So they had a lot of time to prepare a great game plan, and they had three Pro Bowl secondary people, Chris Harris, Akib Talib, T.J. Ward, and they can get after you with the pass rush. They were able to load the box, get an extra defender in there for Newton, and they had a great plan. I think that had a lot to do with it. Coach, um, uh, talking about some young quarterbacks in the NFC, I know it's very early. No regular season games have been played yet, and yet we do have some new information. For example, Goff's not even going to dress for week one. Wentz is starting, and Prescott's taking the world by storm now and has the opportunity because of Romo's injury. What is your impression, first, of the fact that Goff is not even dressing for the game? Honestly, I can't say I'm really surprised after spending a few days with Jared Goff. True junior. He did not red shirt, came out as a true junior. He's just 21 years old, I think. And the offense that he came from really didn't have much of a snap count, never been in a huddle, totally foreign to him. What he's doing now as a pro quarterback, going to take a little time. I don't think it's going to take long. I would think four to five weeks into the season, you'll see Goff. But Prescott, he reminded me of a young Donovan McNabb. He really did. I coached McNabb in the Senior Bowl uh, when I was coaching the Oakland Raiders. There are some similarities between the two of those guys. Like what, for example? Well, they're dual threats. They're finishers. You know, Prescott, he got it done at Mississippi State. How are they doing without Prescott? I think they just lost to South Alabama. He put that program on his back. And he improved year by year by year as a passer. He threw the ball much better than people think his uh, last year in Starkville. And he's a great competitor. Uh, and he's hard to defend now. Hold on, because you're making me nervous. You're sounding to me oh, like oh, you, you're sounding to <laughs> me like you are caught up in Dak Prescott like the second coming, and that we should expect great, great things from the Dallas Cowboys because Dak Prescott is behind center. Is that what you're saying, John Gruden? I think I just said he reminds me of Donovan McNabb. Now, if you remember, Stephen, <laughs> McNabb didn't start as a rookie. They started Doug Peterson, who's the there. head coach of the Eagles. Yep. So I said he reminds me of a young Donovan McNabb. That's what I said. I don't know what you heard, but I can replay it, or somebody <laughs> there at ESPN has the tape. I'm Get sure him. they can replay it for you. Speaking of Doug Peterson, you'd think, given his uh, experience, <laughs> that Chase Daniel maybe would get I couldn't wait for that. But Carson, <laughs> but Carson Wentz is getting the starts. What's your impression of the Philadelphia Eagles quarterback situation? You know, I love this game. Cleveland Browns against the Philadelphia Eagles. Can you imagine if Carson Wentz shreds Cleveland? Cleveland's got to be nervous about that because they had a chance to take a quarterback. They better hope Robert Griffin plays well against Philadelphia. That's going to be interesting to watch. But if you watch Carson Wentz play against Tampa in the first preseason game, he got beat up bad. I can see why he broke his ribs. I thought he was going to break other bones. It's a good thing they got him out of there when they did. I don't know how healthy he is. I don't know where he is in terms of the overall understanding of the Eagles offense. But he better take better care of himself. So, Remember, he got hurt playing at Dakota. 
Coach, I, I mean, we, we've been on, on the air together for a little while here, almost a half hour, and we've talked about quarterbacks, we've talked about teams. I can't believe I'm on the air with John Gruden, and John Gruden's talking about quarterbacks. <laughs> and not one time did he mention the bad man that he is, Aaron Rodgers, who, by the way, is getting Jordy Nelson back. So when we talk about greatness, I'm, I'm, talk, I'm supposed to be talking about a great coach who happens to be a great analyst that didn't bring up the greatest quarterback in the game today. Could you explain yourself about what you think about Aaron Rodgers and why you haven't brought him up in a whole half hour? You've been on this show. <laughs> well, I, I love being on this show. This is as hard as my heart has pumped since we won the Super Bowl. I mean, I love this. Aaron Rodgers is a combination of quickness. He's mentally quick. He's got arm quickness, and man, can this guy move his feet quick. I love that about him. What I like the most about A-Rod is Mike McCarthy is back calling the plays. Mm -hmm. You can say Nelson is coming back. You can say all you want to say. What I love the most about the Green Bay Packers is I like the fact McCarthy's back calling the plays. That's going to make a huge difference. Is Rodgers still the best quarterback in the game, Coach? Be hard to go against Rodgers, uh, but I like the guy up in Seattle as well. I've mm. seen Rodgers and Russell Wilson go head-to-head -head in the postseason, in the regular season. Just hard to defend guys that are that sharp mentally that can move and get out of trouble like they can. I'd probably go with Russell Wilson just because he's younger. I could have him for a longer period of time. You, you, you bring up uh, Russell Wilson, and we have discussed him earlier in the show. He went from, like, this perfect game manager with speed to something that seems to me different. Uh, second half of last year to a crazy kind of playmaker, an MVP level quarterback, and yet still doesn't really, they don't use him maybe as much as, as he might be used, uh, especially with Doug Baldwin. What, do you, what was the difference in the second half of last season in terms of his maturation? I mean, you lose Jimmy Graham, you lose Marshawn Lynch, your offensive line, they have five new starters on their line this year. They have one thing going, I think, on offense, and it's that quarterback. He's unbelievable. They're able to get into a no-back set, put five receivers, backs, tight ends, whatever you want to call them, just put them out in the route and have them run around, and nobody blocks. It's no problem. Russell Wilson, he dodges two guys. He can throw it, run it. Unbelievable player, playmaker, and the more people that you spread out to cover down on these receivers, the more space you create, and he's proven he is hard to tackle coach the carolina panthers are the reigning nfc champions they have the reigning league mvp they're a big physical bunch according to coach herm edwards which is why they're obviously formidable when we think about the nfc and we scour it i'm not picking anybody from the nfc east as being a threat i'm sorry i'm just allergic to doing such a thing but i will look at green bay with aaron Rodgers. i will look at aaron arizona with the crew that they have led by bruce arians and i will look at the seattle seahawks because of russell wilson because of pete carroll and that defense who should carolina be most concerned about in terms of trying to come out of the NFC again? Well, I think you mentioned the obvious teams. That's really good homework that you did there. But I'd be wary, leery. I'd be leery of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Let me tell you about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Stephen A. They got a quarterback. Jameis Winston, all you got to do is turn on the film. The man is, the guy is going to be a great player. Second year. They can run the ball with Doug Martin. They can run the ball with Doug Martin. And they have two big-time receivers. I love Mike Evans. And they're going to be better on defense, I think, with Mike Smith, the ex-head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. They've done a nice job in the preseason. There's a lot of confidence coming out of there. Jameis Winston against Cam Newton on Monday Night Football, that's going to be a good one. Mm. Coach, it's so much fun having you on the show, and obviously we, lo we love the NFL expertise. But I just want you to know, you have an open invitation to join us anytime. Oh, no, 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 the open invitation. He, he challenged me. He challenged so me, Molly, no. to an hour, you your match. and I'm waiting for that challenge. I, 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 I took some hits keep today. You better the homework. I took some hits today, Coach <laughs> Gruden, and you got me a little bit today. I'm going to get you back, though. I'm going to get you back. Well, next time, no quarterback talk. Let's throw me some tougher subjects because uh, I want to show you how versatile I am, how ready no I am. No softballs, <laughs> No, we so appreciate it. Coach, we'll see you on Monday night. We can't wait for that season. Great job, Coach. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Coach. All right, guys. Have a good one.